हरे कृष्णा वेलकम टू आर श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास टुडे इज आर एटी सेवेंथ सेशन बाय कृष्णा मर्सी वी हैड सो मेनी सेशन सो फार एंड वी हैव स्पेंड मैक्सिमम टाइम ऑन द नाइन चैप्टर ऑफ द फर्स्ट कैंटो व्हिच इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल चैप्टर्स इन द श्रीमद भागवतम टुडे वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग द प्रेयर्स ऑफ विष्णु देव टुडे दिस 11 वर्सेस फ्रॉम 32 टू 42 दे आर some of the most uh, cherished and celebrated prayers in the shriman bhagavat so this chapter is very beautiful it talks about death dedicating our lives following dharma and now at the last moment as bhishma is about to die we already described his final moments how he glorifies krishna as the supreme lord he has pacified and encouraged the pandavas he has welcomed all the pandavas who came there is lying on a bed of arrows all the great souls from all over the universe have come there he has welcomed them according to time place and circumstances everything is done all responsibilities are done now he has to die he has to leave the world so what is the final prayer that is offered which is very very instructive for us because shri prabhupada said life is a preparation death is an examination so we are we are learning now from bhishma's example how we can prepare our lives So today we'll take the thirty-second verse, which is the first of these eleven verses. So you can repeat after me. The meter is different, not the standard Bhagavatam meter that we chant. <coughs> so I will chant the first two lines together. Generally we chant one line. This is a little different meter. So I learned it from Lal Govind Prabhu and Nitai Sevini Mataji. So I will just chant the first two lines. then you repeat okay text number 1932 who will read the translation today for put last time who read last time mata ji read ha huh? today saran prabhu will read loudly you may need the microphone to read. please repeat after me 1.9.32 shri bishma vach मतिर्पकृष्णा भगवती सात पुंग विभूमिपगते क्वचि विहर्त प्रकृतिमुपेयुषीयवाहपगते क्वचि विहर्त प्रकृतिमुपेयुषीयवाह ईश्वरी by descending on the material world also from him only the material world is created purport because vishwadev was a statesman the head of the kurd dynasty a great general and a leader of kshatriyas his mind was strewn over so many subjects and his thinking feeling and willing were engaged in different matters now in order to achieve pure devotional service he wanted to invest all powers of thinking feeling and willing entirely in the supreme being lord krishna he is described here as the leader of the devotees and all powerful although lord krishna is the original personality of godhead he himself descends on earth to bestow upon his pure devotees the boon of devotional service He descends sometimes as Lord Krishna as he is, 
and sometimes as Lord Chaitanya. Both are leaders of the pure devotees. Pure devotees of the Lord have no desire other than the service of the Lord, and therefore they are called Sattvata. The Lord is the chief amongst such Sattvatas. Bhishma Dev, therefore, had no other desires. Unless one is purified from all sorts of material desires, the Lord does not become one's leader. Desires cannot be wiped out, but they have only to be purified. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita by the Lord Himself that He gives His instruction from within the heart of a pure devotee who is constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. Such instruction is given not for any material purpose, but only for going back home, back to Godhead. For the ordinary man who wants to lord it over material nature, the Lord not only sanctions, but become, not only sanctions and becomes a witness of activities, but he never gives the non devotee instructions for going back to Godhead. That is the difference in dealings by the Lord with different living beings, both the devotee and the non-devotee. He is leader of all the living beings, as the king of the state rules both the prisoners and the free citizens. But his dealings are different in terms of devotee and non-devotee. Non-devotees never care to take any instruction from the Lord. And therefore, the Lord is silent in their case, although He witnesses all their activities and awards them the necessary results, good or bad. The devotees are above this material goodness and badness. They are progressive on the path of transcendence, and therefore, they have no desire for anything material. The devotee also knows Sri Krishna as the original Narayan, because Lord Sri Krishna by his plenary portion, appears as the Karma Dakshaya Vishnu, the original source of all material creation. The Lord also desires the association of his pure devotees, and for them only, the Lord descends to the earth and enlivens them. The Lord appears out of his own will. He is not forced by the conditions of material nature. He is therefore described here as the Vibhu, or the Almighty, <coughs> for He is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. So if you see in the first verse, this is the first prayer of Bhishma. What is He offering? Like, what is the main thing He is offering Krishna? Thinking, feeling and willing, which was used so far for all managing the government, managing the state. Now he is investing his thinking, feeling and willing on Krishna. Basically his mood is that Krishna has mercifully come before me. Krishna Govinda. Is it shallow? Please understand this very, very carefully. Bhishma's mood is Krishna has mercifully come before me in my last moment. So what should I gift him now? What is Bhishma gifting Krishna? His thoughts. Please understand. He's just about to die. Last moment Krishna has come before him. Very mercifully. So he wants to gift Krishna something. So he wants to gift him his thoughts, thinking, feeling, willing. All of you are also gifting Krishna something. What are you gifting Krishna? Some of you are going to get initiated now. So you'll be gifting, you'll say, I'll gift my life, I'll gift Krishna wealth, my energy, my time. Some of you are giving donations for Krishna. Some of you are, uh, I see some others, they come for cooking for Krishna. Some of you make garlands for Krishna. Some of you are singing for Krishna. Some of you are preaching for Krishna. Some of you are giving your intelligence to Krishna. You can do so much. But a time will come in your life when you have to lie on your deathbed. 
I'm sure you have seen as growing up as since a small child you've seen people dying. Your great grandparents, grandparents. I still remember as a five-year-old boy in 1978, remembering one of our neighbors. Everybody was saying he was 120 years old. Basically, he was older than Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> when I calculate now, and he was so weak, I saw him die in front of me. So that remember, I remember asking, "What is death? Where is he gone? Where is he gone?" So we all have seen people lying on the bed, last moments, right? So what makes us think that we will be an exception? We will also lie on the bed one day. At that moment, what can we offer Krishna? Thoughts. Only our thoughts. Right now, Vishma, that is what he is offering. Whole life he was doing so much activity, right? He kidnapped three princesses. Oh, Chitrangada, Vijitra, Virya. Kya kya actions kya? He fought with Parashuram. What all he has done? Right now, see, many of us cheat ourselves by saying, I am a great devotee because I am preaching. I am coming to temple every day, Prabhuji. I am chanting 15 rounds. But a time will come when you can't do any of this. Sorry to say. Body will be going, going, gone. Bhishma is realizing this. At that time, what? What can you offer Krishna? That time we can, we need to be offering our thoughts. Thoughts means the ability to Think or feel or will, Krishna, I love you. Krishna, I want to offer my life to you. Krishna, I was sincere. Krishna, I remember you. Krishna, I did so much for you. These are all thoughts, emotions. Can we offer that at that time? What do you think? If we practice. Yes, if we practice now, then during death we can offer our thoughts to Krishna. Many of us, sorry to say, we may really find it difficult to offer our thoughts to Krishna because whole life we were busy offering things and activities to Krishna. But through Bhishma Dev, Krishna is teaching us that eventually Krishna wants to see if we can offer behind, beyond these activities and the things, can we offer our thoughts, can we offer our emotions. And now, today, 20th August 2024, 7.46 p.m. is the time to start this practice of offering the thoughts, offering the feelings. If we don't learn to practice offering our thoughts, what will happen? Okay, let us say, let us say we, we don't practice this, offering thoughts, emotions to Krishna. And only externally doing bhakti, doing activities. What do you think will happen in our mind? What, what are the thoughts we will always have? What do you think are the thoughts that we will cultivate? Anxious? What are the thoughts that grip a human being when he is not remembering Krishna happily? Fear. Fear. Fear is the word. The Bhagavatam constantly says, Bhayam Vitiya Vinivesha Tasya. See, basically insecurity. Anxiety. It's all the same thing, but the word used in Bhagavatam is Bhaya. Many times it is used. Bhaya is come from first canto onwards, first chapter, till twelfth canto last chapter. This word will come in almost every chapter. So we will be living with fear, pain, and anxiety. And when we are dying, this will be 10x. Because we are not practicing offering the thoughts now. We are offering, instead of offering our thoughts, we are busy with the activities. That means our mind is filled with bhaya and that bhaya will multiply hundreds of times during our last moments. So basically our thoughts are either Krishna-centered or fear-induced. Bhayam vitira vinivesha tasya isha dapetasya viparya yosmriti Tanmayayato buddha abhajetam bhakte ka esham guru devatatma. The Bhagavatam explains that all the fear and anxiety in our life comes because of duality. We always live in duality. Ye achcha hai, ye bura hai. This is good, this is bad. Bhayam vitiya binibesha tasya. So, when we live in duality, Yes, you know, the duality of this world, 
then avinishetaha means our life is filled with bhaya constantly insecurity and this duality arises because ishad apetasya viparyayo smriti because our thoughts smriti has gone away from remembering krishna so when we are not offering the thoughts to krishna we are gripped by duality friend enemy rich poor good bad this duality grips us because our thoughts are not on krishna viparyayo smriti and therefore ishad apetas when we go away from krishna this is what happens and then what happens when we are away from krishna tan maya yato bhuda abaje tam then maya old illusion catches us therefore the nava yogendra the telling king nimi in the lagan canto that bhuda abaje tam bhuda are buddhi thoughts ko use karo thoda intelligence ko use karo bhuda abaje tam so the bhagavatam is very emphatic please offer your thoughts to krishna now practice because it is our thoughts alone that determine our feelings the way you think the corresponding feelings come and your thoughts not only determine your feelings they also determine your future reality so therefore we need to start remembering krishna now and offer him the thoughts not simply actions i'll tell you a classic example which convinced me of this one of my uncles my father's cousin which means like cousin not really uncle not father's direct brother but his cousin brother he is 95 now so his grandson's marriage was there so they came to the temple for some you know blessings and all that he also had come so i remember telling him that Un- uncle uh, you know now we are going to celebrate very soon we we'll celebrate your century so just hang around okay i was just telling him giving him cheering him up so he, he was always a positive person in whole life very cheerful active but when i told him this he was very sad he said i have lost all the will to live his whole life he was teaching in mba colleges some of the top mba institutes in bombay and he was a consultant to many multinational firms very smart intelligent so he has you know like experience of 70 years <laughs> so much he has seen the world is like a genius and every day for almost 50 years 60 years he has walked every day 150 minutes you know asa uska gadi rakhe that means how many hours two and a half hours every day is to walk so he was always healthy but uh, during the last 3 years 2021 onwards he got bedridden see he slipped in the bathroom so he got his hip now at the age of 90 92 your hip is fractured the chance of recovery becomes very less because of the age and he has never seen in his life being inactive so so 2021 or 22 he was in the bed for 15 months he couldn't get up he couldn't go in the bed so now some way he is able to crawl walk little bit is on a wheelchair all the time so he is saying why i should live i said theek hai abhi thoda adjust karo isme see is all his four children very cultured family he has four sons you know i used to always call them as ram bharat lakshman shatrughna very cultured boys of course they are older than me his youngest son is much older than me <coughs> so and his grandchildren are also married so this is the one grandsons and his wife is also alive and healthy he's got everything in life aap bolo khush rehne ka sab reason hai he has no reason to be sad all his desires have been fulfilled he has got wealth he has three houses in south bombay three i also asked him do you have any unfulfilled desires he said no god has given me everything but still i am not happy because i i cannot not be active so one psychologist visits him three times a week two to three times every week so now what do you think is his problem why is he so sad and depressed hmm? this 
Yeah, he was doing activities whole life. See, I told him, uncle, now you can't do anything now much. You can't go for your consultants. Nobody wants him also now, those colleges. Oh, yeah, now we, sunset years is pending now. So he has not learned how to, how to be irrelevant. <laughs> we all will be irrelevant. We don't train our, we don't practice being irrelevant. <laughs> we think I'll always have market my value. Everybody will. So I told him now you are, it's the time to remember Krishna. And he said immediately, no, I'm a man of action. I want to go to the different firms. I want to do consultancy. I want to go for walking. I used to walk 150 minutes every day. I'm not able to do that. I was so active. I can't sit now and remember Krishna and offer my thoughts. Because whole life he didn't do that. So, moral of the story is, take a pause, take a break, offer your thoughts, connect to Krishna. If we don't do that now, eventually we will find it difficult. See, he is a very good man. He is very sincere. He reads Bhagavatam and Mahabharata every day. He is actually great soul. But still he is struggling so much. I am just imagining, if we are not, see we may not be as fortunate as him. He is actually grateful. But still is miserable. Matlab, kya old age mein, when you are so old, how much in fear will grip us? We can't even imagine. My point is, we have to pause now. We have to connect now. If we don't offer our thoughts to Krishna consistently, every day, many times in a day, how will we offer our consciousness during the last moment? It won't happen just like that. If I am so busy now, if I say I am very busy, Prabhuji, I can't sit and offer my heart to Krishna. Now, tell me, how will I connect to Krishna when I am forced to be not busy? See, there will be a time when you will be forced to be not busy. If we can't offer our heart now, how can we offer our heart later? My fear, I will tell you what is my honest fear. If I am not emotionally connected to Krishna now, then, you know, when my body is giving away, I may feel frustrated and because I'm losing control and then to get some relief, I may land up watching movies or mundane entertainment because we want some relief. And now I'm not emotionally connected to Krishna and I'm getting old, that thing that is staring at my face and because I'm not connected, to, I don't have the practice of remembering Krishna happily, it will become too much. Because we are all Anandomaya Vyasad, right? We are looking for some relief, some happiness. So right now, we need to spend some time daily as if we are helpless and as if we are bedridden and we can't do anything. Not that you lie on the bed, you may fall asleep. Because what I am saying is just sit and relax. Be with your thoughts. Just be with your thoughts because that is what you will be forced to do sooner or later. I am not saying whole day sit with your thoughts. I am not saying that. Take alarm laga, 10 minute ka try karo. Just be with your thoughts. You will see how scared you become. <laughs> because most of us are scared to be alone. You agree? But you will be alone. Why not practice now for 10 minutes every day? Eventually make it 30 minutes and see. Hey, practice a jayega. See, when you sit, relax, na, your mind will rush to thoughts. If you are not practiced, first starting when you sit down like this, your mind will rush to thoughts of sense gratification. So what do you have to do? Come back to awareness without judging. Accept where you are. Allow those thoughts to come. Come back to your aspiration of connecting to Krishna. I think I have spoken that here. Awareness, acceptance, allow aspiration and avoiding action, the five A's of dealing with the mind. So this we have to practice, allowing the thoughts to come, stay, be and leave. But if you are scared of sitting alone with your thoughts because you are thinking you may stick to sense gratification, mind may run right, mind cannot be trusted. Have you heard all of this? I have also heard. So when we are new devotees, we are told by our seniors. Don't sit alone. Don't sit idle with your thoughts. Mind will destroy you. Mind is nasty. Are they speaking the truth or are they lying? 
They are true. What they are saying is true. We may betray our own values if we are alone. So what do we do? We become busy. It is good. Earlier we were busy for Maya, family, job, friends. Now we start being busy for Krishna. One into nine, we keep doing seva. And we hope and pray that when I am forced to be alone, Krishna will help me and save me from my nasty mind. And that is why when I am right now not bedridden, and if I am alone, I want to chant, I want to read Bhagavatam, I want to call up devotees, discuss with them. Very good. But after all of this, I also need to spend some time alone reflecting on what I am doing. What I did, why I did, what I want, why I want, how should I live. We have to spend some time alone. Reflection. You can't say I'm just doing action. The action is important, but you can't always mix reflection and action. We need to remember Krishna told Arjuna in the Gita. You can start yours. I am not cheating. Hare Krishna, please mute yourself, those devotees who are online. Hare Krishna. So what are they saying? Yeah. Reflection and action. Both, both are needed, but you also need to sometimes not combine that. Say Krishna tells Arjuna in the Gita, Tasma Sarveshu Kaleshu Ma Manusmara Yudhyacha. Fight and remember me also. Krishna says, you do your duties and remember me also. That is great. But that was the battlefield. But if you see in the same Gita, see while doing action, we can remember and fight. Like when you are doing work whole day, you can take a break, you can pause, remember Krishna, offer your actions to Krishna. But my point is, you also need to take out time separately and just be with Krishna. Reflect on what I am doing. Just imagine you are like Bhishma, bedridden and in pain. See, Krishna in the Gita, so many places he says, offer your thoughts to me. So many places. Remember me. See, there are many verses in the Gita where Krishna says, remember me. Offer me your heart. Offer me your love. 6.47 is an iconic verse. Yogi Namapi Sarvesha Madgate Nanta Ratmana Shraddha Van Bajate Yomam Sami Yukta Pramod. Always remember me, that is our highest yogi. And that famous verse, Manmana Baba Madbhakto, is the only verse which comes twice in the Gita. Same shloka, twice Krishna speaks. Remember me, remember me. Become my devotee. Offer respects to me. So basically, this is very, very important. And 18. Point uh, 55, Krishna says, Tato maam tattato gyatva vishate tadanantaram. Enter my consciousness, be with me. And then three, four verses later, he says, Mat chitta sarva durgani, mat prafada tarishas. If you are constantly remembering me, then you can get out of this world. But if you are only focusing on action, atha chetvam ahankara, because you think I am the doer, in that mood you are only doing, 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 and not being, na shoshasi. Vinakshasi, you will be uh, lost. You will get lost in this material world. Only action will make us lost without, without being conscious of Krishna. So there are many for whom this verse, 18.58, which I just now quoted, where Krishna says we will be lost. This verse becomes a reality because we are working out of ego, not in a proper consciousness. See, I know some people who say, I can serve Prabhu you whole day. I can do seva. But I can't sit and hear Krishna Kadam. And when they say that, I'm a manager in the temple. I also like it when they say that. Because I encourage them to work because so much seva has to be done. Because I have so many things to get done. And actually this is crazy. And this is violence on my part. Because how can you work for Krishna and not want to hear about Krishna? There is something seriously wrong here. Do you understand? Like if I'm working for Krishna whole day, but I don't want to hear about Krishna. Like let's say you work for your spouse. You love your partner very much. You have a, you have a companion and you work for that person. But on her birthday, on his birthday, somebody is appreciating. You don't want to hear anything. You feel sleepy. <laughs> I'll work for her. I don't love you. So what are you doing for I am doing Nobody likes to hear this. That means we are not working for Krishna. We are working for our own ego. 
So my question is, whom are we working for? Whom are we doing so much seva? Are we doing it for Krishna or are we doing it for our own ego? So this is, I'm talking about 18th chapter, 16, 13th chapter, 16 to 19, Krishna says, please understand me, remember me, I'm inside everything, I'm outside everything, offer your thoughts, understand, understand. see, we don't understand and we can't offer our thoughts if we're only running from morning to night. So my presentation today is, please pause, reflect, understanding will come. Thoda whole Bhagavad Gita Krishna is saying, become conscious of me. So to become conscious of Krishna, you have to spend time with Krishna. We focus more on doing things for Krishna than offering our heart. But even doing things for Krishna, we don't do it for Krishna. Like Srila Prabhupada said, when he used to hear book distribution scores, he used to say, double it for Krishna. So the book distributor is to get inspired. Prabhupada said double it. This year we did 1 lakh books. Next year we will do 2 lakhs. Prabhupada said double it. Prabhupada said double it. For Krishna. That for Krishna we are on side. Mein kar dete so that means we have more faith in our own ability and doing and very little faith in Krishna. That's what we are busy doers. Not relaxed lovers of Krishna. We just want to keep doing, doing, doing. That's where the proof is, you know, I don't want to, I can't chant much. I can't hear much. I would rather keep running around and doing seva. See, if we love Krishna, we will want to hear about Krishna. That is the point. If we are serving someone whole day, then how can we not want to hear about that person whom we are serving? So my point is just pause, reflect, hear, and then again reflect, basically digest your sadhana. <laughs> we are, we are, our sadhana is also in a doing mode. We are constantly doing more and more and more. We have to pause. Please don't. See, as a preacher, you know, we want to give hope giving class. We give motivational class, uh, inspirational classes. So what do we say? Don't worry. Keep serving. Krishna will take care. You have heard this? I also say that. And we have many stories of dramatic deaths of devotees who died, you know, when Krishna came to rescue them. These stories are very inspiring and very motivational. I have spoken that in our weekly class also. Like one of my favorite stories is of a Brahmachari Gopinath Chandra Prabhu's nephew, this 21 year old boy. He was dying of cancer, excruciating pain, one of the worst cancers he got. So when he was dying, he used to scream so loudly in pain that the, his voice could be heard. Although he was given morphine, although he was he had all the painkillers, still the pain was so intense that when he was screaming in pain, it could be heard two lanes away. That much pain he had. But just last moment before dying, he told all the people, devotees were there, that the last six months of excruciating pain, the only time I felt my heart completely peaceful and happy was when I used to hear Srila Prabhupada's voice, Shri Prabhupada chanting, Hare Krishna, that Prabhupada's you know, melody. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Prabhupada standard melody. So he says that gave him so much of peace. So this is our very hope giving. We speak all of this. So when we give, when we say these pastimes, this is to encourage the devotees who come for the Bhagavatam classes that hang on, be in Krishna consciousness, don't give up. This doesn't mean I should give up reflection. It doesn't mean I give up my attempt to connect to Krishna, spend time alone with Krishna and depend on Krishna. See, we can't just depend on Krishna to enter my consciousness, even if I'm unwilling. See, why will Krishna enter your consciousness if you're unwilling? Why will Krishna force himself? We need, we can't absolve ourselves of the responsibility to offer our thoughts to Krishna. That is what Bhishma is saying here. Iti matir upakalpita with Krishna. Abhi mera mati ko mujhe thinking, feeling, thaw, uh, willing ko offer karna hai. So far I offered my energy, my time, my valor. Now I want to offer my thoughts. So we can't say Krishna will do it for me. Krishna will help us, but we need to sit with our thoughts. And when we do that, we will be forced to come face to face with our dark side. Our, our good side, our bad side, our noble side, our asura side. When I'm young and new, I'm passionate. If I spend this time quietly sitting with my thoughts, Maya will grab me. 
So what happens to many of us, we hear so much about how Maya is so powerful and we become so afraid of being alone with our thoughts and then we live our whole life in fear and fear. That's not healthy fear. It is obsessive fear of Maya. It's not that fear has gone away. We always live in fear. That is the reality of modern times. Bhogi roga bayam kule chuti bayam vitte nrupala bayam mane denya bayam bale ripu bayam rupe jaraya bayam shastre vadi bayam khale guna bayam kaye krutanta bayam sarvam vastu bayan vitam bhuvindranam vairagyame va bayam Nine types of fear scriptures explain. Bhogi, one who is always enjoying, there is insecurity, fear. Of disease. Bhogi roga bayam, kule chuti bayam. Manu from a great family dynasty worries whether my dynasty lineage will continue. Vitte nripalat bayam. Manu has a lot of wealth. He is afraid that he may lose his money. Mane denya bayam. Manu is honored. He is very, very fearful and insecure if he gets little disrespect. Bale ripu bayam. Manu is strong. He is afraid of an enemy. Rupe Jaraya Bayam, one is very beautiful, he is afraid of old age or you know, wrinkles and white hair and things like that. Rupe Jaraya, old age is the fear of one who is beautiful. Shastre Vadi Bayam, one is very learned, he is afraid that somebody more intelligent and somebody better will debate and defeat him. Learned person is afraid of that. Shastre Vadi Bayam, Khale Guna Bayam, and one is a thief, chore. Who are those people like Kingfisher, yes. Niram Modi, they are always afraid. They are always afraid. Kale Guna Bayam, the chore hai, usko police ka dar hai. Kae Kritantat Bayam, one who is attached to the body is always afraid of death. Sarvam Vastu Bayan Vitam, everything in this world is covered with fear. Sarvam Vastu. Bhayan Vitam Bhuvindranam. In this planet, every human being is covered with fear. Vairagyam Eva Abhayam. If you want to become fearless, you have to let go. In the Buddhist tradition, they say, let go or be dragged. That's how we, we are. Uh... So, ironically, we talk about fear of Maya, but we live in obsessive fear and we live in duality. And eventually, as devotees get older, if we have not learned how to relax, be with our thoughts, reflect, and we're only busy, then when actually we get bored, which is nature's way of forcing us to relax and connect, I'm sure all of us have got bored at some point of time. That boredom is Krishna's gift. Krishna is telling you, you are bored right now, means just relax. Now is the time to connect. Now is the time to sit. But what we do, we stimulate ourselves with Netflix, YouTube. Because we think boredom is bad. We are, scared, we are scared of pain and boredom, not realizing that it is a gateway to a loving remembrance of Krishna. That's when, that's our moment to grab. In Harvard University, they did an experiment in 2014. They made people sit in a room and uh, they were told to press one button. There was one something, you know, all of them had some 100 people, 200 people were there. You can. So they, they would get an electric shock. When they press, they would get an electric, mild electric shock. <coughs> Everybody who pressed that got a shock, mild shock. And after that experiment, they were asked, would you be willing to do that again if you are paid five dollars? Everybody said Nichi Baba Nichi. So then there was another experiment. The same people were made to sit in a room facing the nature. And they were told at different parts of the huge room and they were said, they were told you just have to sit and do nothing. Just sit here. Pandra minute as a bad man. And by the way, those machines are also kept. You know those machines which they touched and got that mind electric shock. Just for your information, those machines are kept. I'm just telling you. And it was amazing. 92% of those people, they touched that machine at least once. After having already known what it does to them. In fact, one man, you can imagine how much pain he must be in. 
that he touched that machine some hundred times in 15 minutes. Matlab for him, that pain or that shock was better than the pain of silence. He just couldn't take that. That's why that famous mathematician Pascal, he said that 90% of human problems, human, human beings' problems can be solved if he learns to sit alone, quietly in a room. <laughs> Mind is such a dangerous forest. We are so scared of being alone. But if you persist, stay with your thoughts, you will realize that it is not a dangerous forest filled with lions, tigers, leopards. It is a beautiful Vrindavan forest. Radha and Krishna are there. But to Radha Krishna ko pane ke liye thoda to aapko wo andar to aana We need to enter that forest, which means we need to pause, reflect, remember Krishna. I know we have to be busy for Krishna, but we have to take time. You know, devotees, one of the things they do is they quote wrongly one verse from Nectar of Devotion, where Rupa Goswami says, Avyartha Kalatvam. I don't know if you've heard this. Avyartha Kalatvam means devotee, never waste time. One of the nine symptoms of Bhava Bhakti. When I hear that, I find it quite amusing because it's, it's a misquoted verse. See, Bhava Bhakti is a Different than we are right now not practicing bhava bhakti, we are practicing sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti is where we practice bhakti. It is executive bhakti, we are executing bhakti. Bhava bhakti is not executive bhakti. It is effective bhakti, it is the result of bhakti. The bhakti you do because of bhakti. Pyar ke se aap bhakti karte na, usko bhava bhakti bhakti. We bhakti karte hain, ye soch ke ki pyaar milega, that is called sadhana bhakti. That's a big difference. Right now, I chant Hare Krishna for that I can love Krishna. But there are devotees who chant Hare Krishna because they love Krishna. That is bhava bhakti. That's the difference between executing bhakti and effective bhakti. So, jo effective bhakti hai, that is bhava bhakti. Executive bhakti is sadhana bhakti. Are you clear? And Ex- effective bhakti, jo bhava bhakti hai, uska symptom hai, avirta kalatva, never wasting time. That means those who are madly in love with Krishna, they will never waste any moment, they will only be serving Krishna. But does that mean we are doing sadhana bhakti, so we should waste time? No, <laughs> I am not saying we should waste time. I am just saying that we can spend some time reflecting. See, the same Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu, which we quote and say, oh, devotee should never waste time. We so conveniently do cherry picking. We don't quote the whole Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu. The same Bhakti Rasamra Sindhu speaks. Rupa Goswami gives the example of that Brahman in South India who offered sweet rice to Krishna in his mind. He was cooking sweet rice for hours and then he wanted to check the temperature if it is hot enough or cold enough. When he put his finger in that pot, his finger burnt. And then, when he opened his eyes, his actual finger was burnt. That was the power of his meditation. We don't say this in class. If you have a priority, you will meditate. Who will go to the temple? Okay. So, we quote Avirta Kalatvam, but we don't quote the sweet rice pasta. Our main acharyas, you know, they used to spend time remembering Krishna. You know the famous story of Srinath Acharya and Ramchandra Kaviraj? All of them must know, you don't know. Okay, I'll tell you briefly. Srinath Acharya, you know, Srinath Acharya is uh, one, one of our main Acharyas, Srinath Acharya, Narutam Das Thakur, Shamanan Pandit. After six Goswamis, they were considered as main Acharyas in our Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. So, Srinath Acharya is in the spiritual realm, is Mani Manjari, assistant to Rupa Manjari. And uh, Ramchandra Kaviraj is uh, Karuna Manjari. They are all Manjaris assisting the uh, gopis in their pastimes with Krishna. So one day Srinath Acharya was in meditation and his two wives, they were so panicky because he generally would meditate for a few hours, but this was a day when one and a half, two days he was only meditating, he didn't come out of his Samadhi. So they thought he will die now because he was just in a trance. So they panicked, they were doing Kirtan, they were doing everything, but he would not come out of his meditation. So they helplessly ran to Ramchandra Kaviraj. Was his disciple. 
So he came and sat next to Shrinivas Acharya. He said, don't worry, I will take care. And he also entered into meditation. And what was happening? In the Nitya Leela, in Vrindavan, Golo Vrindavan, Radharani was playing with her Sakis in Yamuna, in Kusum Sarovar. And she had lost her Nathani, the nose ring. And Rupa Manjari and her assistants were searching for that. And they were not able to find. So Mani Manjari had joined them to search. And she was frantically diving into the waters and searching. And she couldn't find it all. So when Ramchandra Kagaraj entered this trance, he could see this whole pastime happening. And Mani Manjari is none other than his own spiritual master, Srinivas Acharya, who is sitting next to him. So then he as Karana Manjari, Karana Manjari then entered the Kusum Sarovar, searching for that Nathani and helping Mani Manjari. And in half an hour, she found it. She handed it to Mani Manjari. Mani Manjari gave it to Rupa Manjari, who gave it to Lalita Saki, who put it on Radharani's note. And then Radharani was happy, who took Radharani's favorite Nathani. And then they came out of the Kusum Sarovar, all happy and ready to meet Krishna. The whole thing took three days. In the material world. <laughs> so, when same time Ramchandra Kaviraj and Shinavacharya opened their eyes, they looked at each other, they smiled. The rest nobody understood what was happening. <laughs> so, these pastimes we don't really speak. Because they only do that. So, this is uh, so we quote, we do selective quote quotation. So, I'm not saying we should sit and meditate on Radha Krishna pastime. We can't. But at least we can sit and meditate on our own selves. Are my kaunu? Who am I? Where am I going? What is the goal of my life? Baito, apne baito. Thoda dar lagega, starting man. But baito, bhago mat. Because you cannot run away from your fears by being busy. Aapko picha nahi chodega. Jab tak aap usko face nahi karte ho. Aur wo kadwa hala hal wish ko jab tak. Pee na hi padega. You say, no, but Srila Prabhupada wanted us to be busy. Srila Prabhupada said, Srila Prabhupada to quote karna baut asan. <laughs> See, Srila Prabhupada, when he started the movement, all the men and women were very young. They were twenties, early twenties. They had a lot of passion and energy. So Srila Prabhupada engaged them. But if you see, Srila Prabhupada did not give us explicit three instructions. He gave them, but it is in a coded form. See, for example, he didn't tell, he told us, he told all the young boys and girls during his time, Seva karo, din bar mehnat karo. But he didn't tell us how to engage devotees. He told us how to engage devotees in Seva. Seva karo din bar. But he didn't tell us how to engage devotees who have spent 30 years in the movement, doing service every day. Or he didn't tell us how to engage devotees who are more than 50 years of age, who are serving whole day, every day, for many years. Who's got instructions? Itna sara propaganda letters hai. You will not find that. Even, even when Prabhupada was there on the planet, he was behaving differently to devotees who were a little older in age. The way he dealt with Keith, Steve, uh, Kirtanan Swami, Sasarup Maharaj, Gorgoin Maharaj, Radha Govind Maharaj. It was a little different with a lot of respect. And young boys and girls could have the you know, but so how to deal with devotees who spent decades? How to engage them in service? Prabhupada has not told us. Now, Prabhupada has told us how to take care of children. Gurukul me dalo, Krishna consciousness guru. But he didn't tell us. Because at that time, all children were two years, three years, five years, seven years. He didn't give us instructions on how to take care of teenagers. Because that's when all the challenge happens. He didn't give us specific instructions on how to live with and cooperate with God brothers on the same project. Whenever there was a conflict during Prabhupada's time, he would give them independent projects. That's how Iskon spread, na? In any Jamara Dhanoka, Chalo, Aap Jau, Dutra Mandir Chalo Karo. Udha Dolonga Ne Jamara, Thik, Aap Jau, Dutra Mandir Chalo Karo. Aisa Karke, Iskon Puro Dunia Me Phail Gaya. Abhi Aamara Nida Eki Jaga Pe Rhe Ke, Aap, Pacha, Chalis, Abhi Aamare Mandir Me, 35 years, Saat Me Rhe, Devotees cooperate kar rhe, Jab challenge hota hai. We don't have specific instructions of Prabhupada on how to handle these conflicts. What I'm saying is, when I say Prabhupada has not given us these three things, what I'm saying is, Prabhupada has given it. But we have to personally receive it. It is not like given in word, like specific things. See, some things Prabhupada gave in direct order form. But, like, but some things Prabhupada has given us, you know, it comes, it is received. Like personally, if I read Prabhupada books attentively, then the answers will be revealed to me. Parenting answers, how to cooperate with my God brothers, how to do service after having spent 30 years in the movement. 
these instructions I will receive from Prabhupada in my heart. For that, I need to trust Prabhupada. I need to spend time alone with myself. Hear Prabhupada's class. Reflect. Connect to myself. Then I will understand all of this. And therefore, now I realize that as, I, as I'm getting older, I need to spend some time alone. Yes, it is scary. It is not easy to be alone. But you can't see Krishna without seeing your own dark side, coming face to face with who you are. You can live in denial of who you are and imagine that Krishna will take care of everything. Just be busy. Krishna will take care. But are you willing to tell Krishna that, Krishna, this is who I am. Krishna, please accept me. Krishna, I am not pure devotee, but I am sincere. We don't tell Krishna who we are. We simply superficially say I am fallen. But we don't mean it when we say I am fallen. We imitate pure devotees who say I am fallen. We may also say that, but our main focus is, no, no, I just want Krishna to cure me. I want to go back home, back to God. See, we, the, if we haven't made peace with our dark side, only when we can do that, that is when we relax, when we reflect, when we slowly offer our thoughts to Krishna. And then we will see how far we are from Krishna. And when we see how far we are from Krishna, we will feel humbled. And that humility, which is a gift that Krishna gives us, we will feel Krishna's love in our heart. So that is the whole cycle. When we are in a space of humility, we feel loved by Krishna, despite being fallen, despite our inadequacies. I know many devotees who say, I'm bad, Prabhuji, I'm fallen. But I say, are you happy? No, Prabhuji, I'm very fallen. How can, see, if you're feeling fallen and if you're not happy, that means there is something wrong in your saying that you're fallen. When a devotee, when a sincere devotee feels he's fallen and he's bad, he's actually feeling loved by Krishna. If you're not feeling loved in Krishna consciousness, that means don't say you're fallen. There is something wrong. That means we are saying it superficially. Only when we are happy with our dark side. Yes, I am very bad, but Krishna is so wonderful. I love Krishna. And that can happen only when we spend time with Krishna. We are safe with Krishna. We have to be alone with Krishna. In a non-obligation space. We are always chanting also 16 rounds. Khatam karne ke liye. Can we chant extra? In that space, when you are chanting extra, not because you have to. It is beyond your call of duty. At a space where you are with Krishna, that time with Krishna, that is the defining moment of Krishna. How many of you have read Journey Home? The book, Autobiography of Maharaj, yes. So, he, so many places in the book he writes how he was sitting in the mountain top, on the bank of a river, for hours, 10, 10 hours. None of us will dare to do that. Maharaj to dasas ganta baitte te. That's what, that was his journey home, right? So we think we are so advanced, our journey home has already, we have reached home. <laughs> we think we don't have to go through that journey. We are so, Maharaj ko itna shakal, he had to go through such a journey. In fact, 10 years ago, Maharaj was in Rishikesh. We had gone there. He was staying and then he used to go to the same rock where he used to sit before becoming devotee. So morning would get up. Every day this was his schedule. He stayed for 10 days there. Every day he would get up at 4 o'clock. He would complete his 16 rounds by 6 o'clock. Then around 6.15, nah, he would hear Prabhupada's class till 7 o'clock. And after that, 7 o'clock, he would go to that rock. And he would sit there till evening 7 o'clock. Just sit on the rock and look at the Ganga. Just like this. I know what you are thinking. Prabhuji, can I chant when I am sitting alone? <laughs> Can I do something? Just alone is scary. <laughs> okay, you chant. You do what you want. But be with Krishna. Can you do that? See, that will be a time when you will not be able to chant also. You will not be able to move your beats. What will you do that time? That is my question. See, I will give an example. Once I was very sick when I joined the ashram. That time we didn't have all these facilities like we have now. So, I was very sick. So, Gaurang Prabhu was my counsellor. He was in the ashram. And he saw He said, Abhidhar, go hospital. So, Bhakti is in the hospital. So, from here, we went to Grand Road by taxi. So in the train, Sunday now, so it's not beat nahi So I remember very clearly, I'm sitting near the window, exhausted, sit. I'm sitting in the near the window and very weak. And my hand was in the beat bag. I was trying to chant also. I was miserable. And look at Gaurav sensitivity. He saw that I'm miserable. 
is that particularly feedback we come so he removed my feedback and put it in the bag and then i can't tell you how relieved i felt because my physically i was i was sick actually and the chanting was not helping me <laughs> in my sickness and i was not asleep also it's not that i was falling sleepy i was sick i couldn't chant and i basically needed to relax at that time so he was sensitive he understood he gently removed the beat back put it in the bag and then i felt better <laughs> of course i chanted my 16 rounds that day but i'm just saying <coughs> old age age of 85 90 it would be like there's no coming back right now at least i know i'll be all right if i go after i go to hospital my time will come and you will not be able to chant that time we have to offer our thoughts now we don't know how to when you say relax you think sleep acha main so gaya we think relax means relaxation means sleeping or watching tv no i'm talking about relaxation means consciously not doing anything just just i told this i gave a presentation on relaxation in, uh, in one very famous iskon temple i was told there are 30 of our main leaders who are taking care of 200 people and these 200 people are taking care of our 10000 volunteers so these 30 are the main people so i spoke on relaxation the same thing which i am speaking now after that their main leader said prabhu ji what is this who will run the temple if everybody relaxes ha <laughs> daily rasgulla and sleep i could see how stressed he was i said prabhu you need to relax first <laughs> I told you, I'm not saying you should relax whole day. I'm just saying, for a time, you relax. Ten minutes to relax, do it. See, we are in a forest where a lot of action is happening. A lot of caravan is passing. We are sitting on a bench and watching all the caravan. Forest is the mind. Uh, a lot of actions are happening. But you know, a time will come and all the carriages will go away, and it will be sunset. It will be dark in that forest. and that last particle of dust will settle and you will be all alone in that bench and in that forest ha huh? it will be very scary yeah. hare krishna Kishan. please mute rashmi mata ji you are here there's another another rashmi mata ji please mute hari bol Yeah, so you're distracting, right? Mm-hmm. What did I say, Bhavan? I was in a flow of thought. Yeah, the forest. Under a forest, eh? Oh, forest! Now, what action is going on? There's a lot of festival going on. Aau is going on. Fun fair, carnival going on. But you will be alone some time or the other. and we don't relax because of many reasons one is because uh, we are materialistic we want more and more and more another reason why we don't relax is because we are envious because we always compare ourselves with others and if they have it i should also have it one reason why we don't relax is because we prefer achievement over relationships that's also a reality one reason why we don't relax is we have insecurity that if i don't have enough for old age what will happen is a and the main reason why we don't relax is because of the mistake and identity we say no i'm not the body i'm the soul but we are all having mistake and identity what is our mistake identity what is our mistake and identity ha ah we we are identify actually we place our worth on our work we think if i'm working a lot then i am worthy that is a mistaken identity actually our identity see we we need to know that our worth is not in our work but our worth is in whom we to whom we belong to see we belong to krishna and we are worthy because krishna loves us regardless of what we have achieved but because we have this wrong mistaken identity of our worth so we are always busy working thinking that if i do so much then i am worthy but krishna doesn't care what you do krishna wants to krishna doesn't see the goals you have achieved krishna wants to see our desire to love him to serve him to serve his devotees 
Am I perfect? No. Am I sinful? Yes. Am I bad? Yes. But still Krishna loves me. And that is my worth. If you don't have that sense of belongingness, we'll never relax. Because we'll always think that I'm not worthy. So I'm dear to Krishna. I need to feel Krishna's love. And I need to trust Krishna and Ananyas Chintayan Tomam Yoga Kshema Vahamim Krishna will protect. So let us spend some time and be happy. And then when we are like Bhishma, we'll be able to offer our thoughts. I grew up in a village with my grandparents. Every day in the evening, I would hold my Nana and Nani and we would go to the fields. That was that time we didn't have TV. This is 90, late 1970s. Go to the fields and in the fields, you know, between two, three fields, there would be a space to walk. I don't know what it is called in English. It would be, so there you would sit. And my, I would see my grandfather look into the vast expanse of the fields in front of him. Just stare into nothingness like this. You would just keep looking. And my grand, I would look at my grandmom, she also would be. And then I would look at my grandfather and he would be. And then occasionally, maybe once in a few minutes, he would look at her and say something and she would say, oh. and then again they would, and how are they, what are they doing? <laughs> and then maybe after, I don't know how long, maybe one hour, I don't know. Then they would look at each other and then they would go back home and I would go with them. They did nothing and they left their bodies very graciously, Aram said. Basically, they merged with the universe. Ab kuch bhi nahi hai. What are we? Nothing. And then they just, they, they're connected with that. Recently that Jitendra Swami, Jitendra Das Babaji Maharaj from, he's a Bhagavad Katakar. His father is 102 years old. This is just three months ago. One of our devotees saw this live. Whole life, what he did, this old man, Vrindavan, just doing Katha, Krishna Katha, leading a simple life. Not big fanfare, no cameras flashing, no Facebook, millions of followers. 102 year old. And in the evening, he's telling everyone, Acha, this ko milna hai, aake milen, kal shaam ko mein ja raha hu. Hamara time ho gaya. Thakur ji bula rahe. So then everybody comes to meet him. He takes his blessings. And in a two-year-old, Ekadashi day, gives everybody blessings, Tarnamrit. Okay, 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 time ho gaya. Abhi jana hai. Aap log pushi se rahe na? Aap Thakur ji ka naam lete rahe na. Radhe, Radhe. And he goes, <laughs> this is how Bhishma left, right? And we're not talking about some hundred years back. Abhi, 2024 April. So these are some people who have lived their life in harmony, in sync with nature. Offering their thoughts, offering their life, not in a hurry to do many things. We are so disconnected in the name of you know, being uh, missionaries and all of that. Miserable level. Hare Krishna. I'll pause here. If there is any last comment or so the essence is what are the words? What is Bhishma offering? Thinking, feeling, and willing. So what is the theme of our today's class? Offer your start practicing offering your thoughts to Krishna because the time will come when you can't offer your money and your energy and time. You will be lying on the bed. You may not be able to even chant your 16 rounds. Hare Krishna. Oh. How to offer thoughts by a few ways. One is you can start reflecting on the scriptures. Meditating on the verses, the themes, the pastimes. Second, you can start writing. Prayers. Because when you sit and offer prayer, mind runs everywhere. Mind is very fast. So write it down. Krishna, I love you. Krishna, I want to serve you. Mind will run slower when you write than when you are sitting quiet. If you sit and sit like this, Krishna, I love you. I want then mind will run away. Once I was in temple hall and offering prayer, and Krishna, Oh, Sandeep or Swati ka divorce ho raha hai. Ko bacha lena, Krishna. Bada achche log hai. Sincere prayer. I began like that. But my mind started. Oh, Swati ka galti hai. Oh, na laik ladki hai. Oh, dekho, oh, ladki. Why see, she is exactly case study. Why see, like that lady in London. 
शी ऑल्सो इज डिवोर्सिंग अर हस्बैंड दोनों का सेम गड़बड़ है वो एंड दैट लेडी शी लुक एक्जैक्टली लाइक बाबी रिमेम्बर एंड बाबी डाइड इन दैट बाइक बाइक एक्सीडेंट में मर गई थी वो उसका हेलमेट पहना था फिर भी उसको मर गई बच्चों को कुछ नहीं हुआ वो बस वाले ऐसा बाइक को ठोक देते हैं एक्सीडेंट यू आउटसाइड हाई कोर्ट जहां पे वो बस ने ठोक दिया था उसको फिर याद है वो हाई कोर्ट के बाहर एक आदमी वो चाकू से मारा है पूरा खून से लता हुआ था और भाग रहा था दर द एग्जैक्टली लेटर सीन विच वी सॉ इन दैट मूवी एट मेट्रो थिएटर वो मूवी हिट हो गया था और वो मूवी देखने के लिए हम लोग पांच दोस्त गए थे अभी वो एक वाला दोस्त अमेरिका में है दूसरा लंडन में और तीसरा अरे तीसरा तो लंडन में लंडन में तो वो भी है जिसका डिवोर्स हो रहा है लंडन वो डिवोर्स है शिकाती का हो रहा है संदीप का हो रहा है मैंने रियलाइज आई आई वाज टॉक आई वाज प्रेइंग अबाउट संदीप एंड संदीप तो अभी दो मिनट में मेरा माइंड पूरा दुनिया का भ्रमण करके 1996 में जाके फ्यूचर में पास्ट में जाके अमेरिका पूरा घूम के आ गया और मैं ऐसे ही खड़ा हूं और डेवडा के बोल रहे पूछ क्या प्रे कर रहे थे आप भगवान आप कितना इंटेंसली प्रे प्रे कर रहे थे आप कितना अच्छा प्रे प्रे मेरे लिए भी प्रे करना <laughs> मैं तो इसी के लिए मेरा अवतार हुआ है मैं आपके लिए सबके लिए प्रे करने आया माइंड सब जगह बात है तो इसीलिए मैं लिखता हूँ कृष्णा आई लव यू कृष्णा माइंड मेन यूर राइटिंग ऑल्सो माइंड विल वॉन्डर वन वॉट आई डू आई स्टॉप द प्रेयर ऐसे राइट नाउ माई माइंड इज से अबाउट दैट लेडी इन लंडन हुआ हसबेंड यू जस्ट राइट वॉट द माइंड इज से माइंड बिकम्स क्वाइट माइंड गुस्सा होता था माइंड को मैंने अप्रिहेंड द माइंड ना लाइक चोर को पकड़ा तो चोर तो वैसे जैसे माइंड माइंड जो बोल रहा है बिना जजमेंट का लिखते रहने का जैसे वीडियो कैमरा देखता है रूम को वैसा माइंड को देखने का माइंड जो बोल रहा है लिखने जैसे मैं लिखता हूँ माइंड अभी ये बोला माइंड अभी ये बोल रहा है माइंड बोल रहा है गेटअप एंड गोड वॉश रूम माइंड की वॉटर इन द क्लास आई फील थर्स्टी माइंड जो बोल रहा है लिखते रहने का एंड एट समाइंड माइंड सडनली कीप क्वाइट यू गो ब्लैंक तो वेन यू गो ब्लैंक देन गो बैक टू द फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ विच यू रोड कृष्णा आई लव यू आई वॉन्ट टू सर्व यू So when you write the sentence again, you will see a big difference in that same sentence which you are writing. I don't want words. <laughs> I don't want words. So what are the things? So first you began by writing a prayer, but when you are writing that prayer, your heart was not in it. You are not feeling the prayer. So that's why you stopped writing a prayer and you just wrote what the mind is saying. When you wrote what the mind is saying, then at certain point of time, mind goes blank. Then mind goes blank means यहाँ पे left side में आपका mind है चुप हो गया. That's the time to turn away and turn to Krishna. Then you write a prayer. Because earlier when you were writing a prayer, it was not you telling Krishna. It was your mind shouting. इसलिए you could not offer prayer with your. It was not your prayer. It was not your voice. It was the mind's voice. So therefore, I stop prayer and I turn to the mind and said, "What are you saying? Say it. Ah, ah, you are saying this, you are saying that." Then the mind became quiet. Then again, I turned and again continued offering my prayers. So, how to offer thoughts is one is reflecting on scriptures. Second is writing down the prayers. Then, let's say you don't like writing, but you can't sit and offer prayer. Mind, mind. Then what you do? Offer prayers vocally. Instead of writing, you actually say it in words. Krishna, I want to serve you. See when you are saying Krishna, please help Sandeep and Swati not get divorced. It's very unlikely that you will start actually saying, "Oh, that divorce of that devotee in London is also happening because of that." Because your mind won't run so fast when you are actually speaking. But if all of us go to temple hall and start praying vocally, it will create a big mess. That's why I guess all people are sitting there. But then, what you can do in your own altar at home, when nobody is watching, you can close the door. And start offering prayers. You can even dance. You can even shout. You can even cry. You can actually express your heart, Krishna. Please help me, Krishna. I am going through this. You can actually offer prayers. And then you realize when you offer prayers vocally alone, some people feel very weird because that feeling of weirdness is because. Deep rooted is our atheistic tendency. We never believe that Krishna is a person. Now, when you are actually offering prayers vocally, you are actually forced to accept that Krishna is a person is sitting in front of you, and that feels very weird because we we are forced to accept that there is a person. Some people feel weird. Some people they start panting. You know what is panting? <laughs> and they are like they have shared this. I asked. People, why you start? I don't know, Prabhuji. I am just praying. I am speaking two sentences, then my voice chokes up, and I am just 
I said that you are panting because after many many lifetimes of running away, now you are running towards you stop running because you have come to Krishna, and when you have come to Krishna, finally you realize how much you are running. You just it's like too good to be true. That's why you are tired. Some people they neither pant nor are they feeling weird. They start speaking two three sentences vocally and they start crying because they feel loved by Krishna. So you will go through different emotions. So there are different ways you can offer your thoughts to Krishna. Either vocally speaking it, or writing it down, or reflecting on scriptures. Because Arjuna was very sense controlled, his mind was very powerful. So he could actually the first canto, fifteen chapter, text number twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. If you get time, you should read that. Of course, we will eventually come to that. We will eventually come to that sooner or later. I think our nine chapter is going. So, fifteen chapter, we will see Arjuna offering uh, those uh, reflection on scriptures, and then he is able to offer his thoughts, and how his heart expanded. There are a series of verses: one, fifteen, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. So, these are some of the things we could do. And another way to offer your thoughts to Krishna is uh, through gratitude practices. Now, very interesting. Generally, we tell everybody else to practice gratitude. When we come in front of Krishna, but when we come in front of Krishna, we don't offer gratitude. We ask from Krishna, and others, others we tell them, you should be grateful to Krishna. What I am offering, I am saying is do ulta. When you come in front of Krishna, just express gratitude, and for yourself, gratitude for ourselves, and prayers for others. Generally, we pray for ourselves, and we tell others to be grateful. Ulta karo. They say, uh, like there is one boy I met during the journaling workshop I did in GEV. He came to me, and uh, there are hundred and hundred people. Everybody was talking to, him and he came to me for two minutes. He spoke. He said, "Prabhu, I am going blind. In next two years, I will be completely blind. I am lost. I have lost faith in Krishna. I am just twenty-two. So after another two years, I will not be able to see the world. So I am. I have contemplated suicide at least fifty times. So when I go completely blind, that day I will take poison and I will die." I am trying to console him, convince him that there is some medicine. If it proves you, I can't go. I can't say. I have Ayurveda, Homeopathy, all tried. There, nothing can help. I am going blind. So I wanted to tell him more. I wanted to hug him. I wanted to talk to him. But then there are so many people. Somebody wanted to sign on the book. Somebody wanted to take selfie. I said, "Ruk, ruk, ruk. I am talking. Now, then I introduced him to Abhishek. I said, 'Tu ruk ja, I am coming.' And by the time I finished, and I came, he was gone. And Abhishek didn't know where he was. And I'm not. I'm like remembering him every day. I just know his first time. I I offer a prayer for him, and I thank Krishna. Meri aankhe hai. Thank you, Krishna. So grateful for what I have and prayer for him. Generally, we are praying, asking for ourselves. So our thoughts are impure. So let us offer prayers for others who are suffering. And about ourselves, we already have enough. Anyway, so this is uh, the way we can offer our thoughts. We'll stop here, and uh, I want to thank all of you. I know his first name. I've told Abhishek to contact him. That boy's name is also Abhishek. I think Abhishek Singh or something. I don't know where he is. So I am going to uh, Krishna Willing. I will be in US next week. Uh, around next week after Janmashtami, I will be leaving. So every year I go. So I need all of your prayers. It's not easy. Uh, it's a long trip and lot of places, lot of programs, lot of challenges. But to please my Guru Maharaj, I will be traveling, and I need all of your blessings that I can do the seva nicely. And I'll be missing these sessions for the next eight, seven to no six weeks. Six weeks. I hope to come back and. Uh, but to know, I'll be missing. But the classes. Ah, he took now one class. I forgot to talk to him about it. He took on Vishma prayers. No, he is usually the weekend. Ah, so he will do. It. He will do some uh, Bhagavat. I told him to teach whatever Bhagavat inspires you, and I will come and continue the prayers of Vishma. We'll start from building three. Whatever. Inspires him. Ah, we'll give it to because Bhagavatam, whatever inspires him, let him speak. Hmm? Is that okay?
हरे कृष्ण गंत्रा श्रीमद भागवतम की जय थैंक यू ऑल द डिवोटीज ऑफ कम ऑनलाइन ऑल्सो हरे कृष्ण